Great afternoon. Welcome once again to Searching the Scriptures. And since we're on an intentional course and we're staying according to our God, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, the two. <laughs> The Word of God and the Holy Spirit, thank and praise God for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God himself dwelling inside of us. And so we have been intentional to look back into the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible, and um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So we have moved on to the book of Joshua. And it made me think about, we're in Joshua, the third chapter now, when the children of Israel well, first, we, when we look back on the last few tapes, we've been dealing with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, then Joseph, then Moses, and now Joshua. So we're seeing how God, and then in the book of Joshua, we saw that God actually, um, by faith, was dealing with Rahab because she has heard the, the, the testimony of what God had been doing. And she believed it, and the fear of God was in her. And through that, she received the uh, to become a part of the uh, the uh, patriarchs of old in the book of Hebrews. Her her name is either Rahab the Harlot Harlot is listed in there. So, so we see that God watching over His word. Rahab is listed in the eleventh chapter of uh, is Rahab by faith the Harlot Rahab. Um, um, uh, perish not with them that believe not when she had received the spies um, in peace. So we see that God is not just going by a group of people, y'all. Okay, well, he's going back to those who believe in him. We see the New Testament too with Cornelius. God is looking for people not just talking about their uh, genealogy. You know, he's looking for people of faith who really believe the, in him and believe in his word. Those, that's why he said, um, those, uh, if you abide in him and his word, but abide in you. So it's, I think when um, Peter went and saw Cornelius, he said he perceived that God is no respect of person. Do all will believe. And that's what it comes down to. And um, we're going to look in Joshua, the third chapter, because, uh, and I thank God my sister Dale, she's been in the Old Testament. The, the scripture says in 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So in order for to have the good works, you need to be thoroughly furnished. That means supplied. <laughs> and that's what the word of God, so that we can really do the work of God, we need to uh, search the scriptures, okay? Clearly. That's what the word is saying. All scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions and righteousness that the man, or, you know, just me, mankind and me of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So there's no way to get, to do good works without uh, really searching the scriptures and the scriptures will help us to understand what is the will, the way, and the word of God, Okay. That's why I'll be on this YouTube channel. And I've been listening uh, to this one. I watched a couple of things with my husband and son. And was talking about, um, uh, you know, like these people creating some kind of uh, condition against the humans so they can use one uh, bio weapon against another bio weapon. And it made me think about the um, the heart of man. And then it made me think about, um, I was listening to one of these Jewish uh, he's actually a rabbi, and he's one of the ones I've been listening to, and he was saying, um, this, talking about the sovereignty of God, and I kind of pushed so I could follow him, and he's an actual rabbi. And he was saying about the sovereignty of God, when you see something, like he said, uh, uh, horrendous, you know, like a, a beheading of a baby, he said, can you um, really say that God is not in there, which made me think about the scriptures, it said if something be done, talking about God's sovereignty, y'all, that God, who's omnipresent, all-powerful, and all-knowing, why would God allow this? And this is, on our side, we would say, well, you know, we would think, well, God is just good, which God is good, but why would he allow certain things to happen? But that's the big picture. We talked about the other day, the big picture and what God is doing, and we just got a little fragment or, or a little drop or a little piece of it because we're talking about creating a new world, 
a new heaven, a new earth, and a new creation, okay? And taking all the things that are happening now to, um, to bring forth this new creation, which that's what we've been studying about, the seven feasts of God listed in the Pentateuch, the Torah, dealing with Leviticus and talk about the seasons and times that these feasts are manifested. So now we're going to go back to Joshua, but uh, and then we're going to read Joshua, the third chapter, verses 1 through 5. And, and we're going to pick up, I have a song to sing, but this, this, this came to me. Um, and I think this song, it came is for years ago, for years. Years ago I had this song, but it came up when I was studying this here. So we're going to pray and go into the scriptures, okay? Thank you for following. And the reason it's good for you and me, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 7, all scriptures given by the inspiration of God and is profitable, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. So therefore, that's why we're in the scripture, because it said clearly all the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is profitable. Okay, and the various things, 2 Timothy 3, there's a reason for us doing this, because we want to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay, and it clearly said if we abide in him and his word abide in us, so how can we bring forth that kind of fruit, the good the fruit that God wants, you know, the fruit of righteousness, the fruit that is of the spirit without having the word of God, which is, you know the parable of the word, the soil went forth, the soil is seed, and some fell among thorns. So we know this. So this is why we, we're making an intentional decision to study, to show ourselves approved unto God. Working that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And yes, some people, I thank God for every one that gives me scriptures and give me comments. I thank God for you because the scripture said, no scripture is given to any private interpretation. No one person say, I got the whole revelation of the Lord. No, because we all, only one that got all the revelation is God himself, okay? Uh, even when Jesus was in the earth, he said, my father is greater than me. Because I now have on flesh, he said, my father is greater than I. Because God is God. And he knew when the word of God became flesh, he clearly said uh, that what he, uh, his disciples, God has given them to him. And that he would not lose one. And he even said he committed his um, uh, disciples or his, his uh, uh, servants into the hands of God the Father. And God the Father was greater. So we know that God is reigning from his throne over the heavens and the earth. Over everything. Okay. And he clearly declares I'm, I'm God and there's no other God except me. He said, I don't know any other God. <laughs> Which I think that's, that is so wonderful this, for him to reveal himself. I'm only God. And, and every time you see these uh, books, 66 books, he keeps saying, they shall know that I am God. They shall know. They shall know. Okay. Now, some people can get can know like Rahab from just hearing. But some people don't know until they get a little knocked down a couple of times. Like some people say, I don't know. Um, I think I can take him. I think I can take him. Ah, yeah. Until they knock you down. Okay, but some people, some children, all you have to do is tell them. And they can look and they can observe and say, Ooh, my, oh, wow, it's awesome. Other people, they don't say how bad it looks. They says, I don't believe until I know it. That's what Pharaoh kept saying. I don't know him. And, I, and God kept, you know, to leave. But anyway, let's go on to the lesson. We're going to pray. Father, we thank and praise you for your mercies and grace toward us. We thank and praise you for, first of all, that while we were in darkness, you sought us, Lord God, and you called us forth to the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. I myself am so grateful, Lord God, that you did not leave me in my sins. How about because you did not leave me in my state, but you saw fit, oh God, to open up the eyes of my understanding. You saw, uh, saw, Lord God, hallelujah, the mercy and grace upon my life, Lord God, to call me and my sisters and brothers and to the, the glorious gospel of Christ. We pray for your will to be done in us and through us and for us. We thank and praise you. The word declare that those who sit in darkness have seen a great light. That light truly is Christ. We thank and praise you for illuminating us, God, on the very depths of our souls, that the word will fall on good ground and take root in our lives. As we go into the word today, we pray it will fall on good ground and take root, 
Lord God, that we will continue to yield fruit, Lord God, and give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. We commit ourselves into your hands and count it done. Amen. So we really um, talk about Joshua. So I really thought about Joshua too because Joshua was a servant of, of, of the of uh, he helped Moses many times. But we saw in the scriptures before when they were down in the valley and the, Moses' hand was being held up. Joshua was down in the valley, the valley, and I didn't. I kind of looked past that. But as I was thinking, Joshua has always been one who seemed like to be leading people into battle. <laughs> when they had came back with the report, you know, we see that Joshua and Caleb was the ones that said, no, let's go on. He was always, not a lot of things said about him, but when he was down there in the battle um, and he began to say, you know, they was fighting. Moses and her and those was and Aaron was up there and they were holding up Moses' hand. But Joshua was the one down there fighting. So this particular book about Joshua, we see that God begins to command him and begins to say to him, um, be of good courage and to um, not to be afraid, uh, not to be dismayed. And so we're going to cover um, the third chapter now. We're going to go to the third chapter which we're skipping. We're not giving all the information because uh, we got Rahab and we saw that God um, gave her grace because she believed the report that she had heard. She said, we've heard it. Now in the third chapter, they get ready to cross the Jordan and they had already been told three days. So I, I know that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's not just to tell a story. Y'all like, we like, well, it's, no, it's some details into the scriptures now, this here, um, passing of the Jordan, I begin to look at the territory and the Jordan, even when Christ, when, uh, if you look at Jordan, it comes down and I don't have a map of it. And, um, but it comes down and runs all the way through the Palestinian, uh, all through the land over there. And what me think about when God told Abraham that every place his feet tread, he even told it to Joshua. Then you look at the, the, the map, how they left Egypt. Then they came down uh, uh, through that land, and then they went back up and camped. And then they turned around, and they brought, came and got the, um, the Lord destroyed, the Egyptians. And then you go, and you see them going and traversing through the various places. This here time when they're going to, to um, Jericho is the battle they get in when they're getting ready to cross over the Jordan. A lot of theologians say the crossing over the Jordan Similar to coming out of Egypt and going through the Red Sea, this river of Jordan is a furry, um, the song came to me, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross, oh, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross, it says, one more river to cross, and because it's talking about God, but they're possessing the land. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, um, it says in the first part of, ja of, of Joshua, it begins to tell them wherever their feet tread that God was going to give them the land. It says, um, I have not, I command thee, be strong. I want to go to the part that says that he gave, told him to his, wherever his feet tread. So God is telling Joshua, just like he told Abraham, that where you walk and where you tread, thank you, Jesus, that it is yours. So you can see through the various maps how God began to take them down and then take them up again and bring them down. And now they're coming back to go across the Jordan and going back to Jerusalem. And so we're reading the third chapter. And Joshua rose up early in the morning and they removed from Shittim. So we don't have the map here. But and, and came to Jordan, he and all the children of Israel. Um, the passage of Jordan, type of our death with Christ, it says, and it talks about going down into the Jordan, like going through the Red Sea was a type of death, was a type of being buried with Christ. This is what this Jordan means to this next generation. Um, and it came to pass after three days, which we know the three days is always indication of the resurrection time it means it clearly talks about uh three the number three and how many times god began to show us through the scriptures various things that are occurring now they're at the jordan and the jordan is just on the other side 
of the Jordan will be Jerusalem, okay, or the promised land. Um, that the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you are, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord, your God and the priests of the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your places and go after it. I stopped there because the ark is symbolizing Christ. It was made of shittenham wood and it, and it begins to talk about a case of wood and it, uh, it symbolizes it in the um, book of Exodus when God began to tell Moses to make the ark and overlay it with gold. Now, some people say, well, maybe just covering the wood. No, it is a, uh, a type of, he is in a humble way. Uh, it's be showing us the, uh, the Savior to come in a humble way. Okay, um, Exodus 25. And we're going to go back and look at that right quick because... Um, verse 10 of the 25th chapter, all of the things since all scripture is y'all is given by the inspiration of God is profitable. Okay. So for us to learn something, we don't want to rush through it. Okay. And the ark is definitely symbolizing Christ. Christ is our ark. Just like Noah built the ark and the, the Noah built the ark, which was a foreshadow of Christ being our refuge in the time of storm. And here we see that they are carrying the ark over the Jordan or wherever they go, the ark of the, is there. And inside the ark is the Ten Commandments. So now we see, we're going to go back and see as Joshua is telling us here, the officers went through the host and they commanded the people saying, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord thy God, the priests and the Levites bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. And there shall be a space between you and it about 2,000 cubits by measure. Uh, come not near unto it that you may, that you might know the way by which you should go. And ye shall have, uh, and ye, for ye have not passed this way before. Now this is, we had to slow down on this part of the scripture, y'all, because this is the part that's talking about Christ. And there's 2,000, um, cubits it says it's relating to like um the distance like when christ crossed over the jordan and christ died and it says uh they're carrying the 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 ark which means christ having to go over the jordan go to, uh, when he came into jerusalem and it says don't come too far because you can't go ahead of what god has set for christ a lot of people say well you know we don't see Christ as setting the pace for salvation. We don't see that the, the works of Christ riding in on the donkey or being in Jerusalem for uh, before the Passover. We don't see the, 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 um, the pace being set by God. But we, God is the one of detail. When he said, not one jot, not one tittle shall fall to the ground till it all be performed. And the enemy will sometimes tell us, well, you can take a shortcut. You can go the uh, the uh, the uh, the short way, but every single word of God cannot be altered. Every single word of God has to be fulfilled exactly the way God said it. Otherwise, it's like we make a mistake and we make, we write something and we say, "Oh, just cross it out, just cross it out," because you know I just put a circle around it and cross it out, or I'll erase it. But God cannot erase what He said. He cannot erase it. Okay, and so he's precise, and that's what you see in the ark. It says, And you shall make an ark of shit and wood of two cubits and a half, and it shall be the length thereof of a cubit, and the half of the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half. So, all this is going to set down and show you about the tabernacle of God. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold within and without, and overlay it in it, and shall make upon it a crown of gold, gold round about. So it's putting the crown of gold. All this is showing the, the shit in the wood I look at. It says um, it's kind of wood that's, um, that is uh, sturdy and it's able to, uh, um, it's acacia wood. And it is uh, a, like strong, strong wood, not, not uh, weak or porous wood, but it's a wood that can stand up underneath, uh, like they make furniture out of it, okay? So it's not a weak kind of wood, okay? And we can see through... Um, Noah's wood. It said that wood, but the, the acacia wood, it says it doesn't lack a lot of light. 
okay? It's kind of wood that's kind of um, put under, uh, not into a lot of light. I looked that up too. If you look at the acacia wood. Now the gopher wood, which is made out of the, uh, the, the uh, boat, it said it can withstand like storms. It can, so they had different woods all showing you about the character and the ability of Christ. Now people say, well, Mother Allen, I mean, he's a man. But if he, he can relate Christ to the wood, the acacia wood, or the um, gopher, gopher wood, easy can, he can easily relate his character and his ability because, after all, we only made out of dirt, okay? <laughs> Just think about it. We, we are made out of dirt. But what it's showing you, the strength of him and the ability to withstand, which we know that turns out to be. And it talk about 2,000 feet. The 2,000 feet, it talks about, um, I looked up that too, and it says um, a cubic feet. It, it relates to the Sabbath day journey, and it talks about a Sabbath day journey out of, listed in Acts, the first chapter, verse 12, uh, denotes a um, 2,000 cubic feet or 0.92 kilometers or 50, 0.57 of a mile. The camp, the camp, um, when they were camped, it says the tents had to be 2,000 cubits away from the center of the, like where the tabernacle worker, which is the three chambers. And those who camped, all the 12 tribes who camped around the, the, uh, the, the sanctuary had to be uh, points or they had to be 2,000 cubits feet away from it. And you know that's why, because we told you before that God would choose who would come close to him. God would choose when it's time to come into him. He told Moses to tell the people to sanctify themselves because I'm coming now and don't let nobody touch. So even when the tabernacle was in the wilderness, they had to be spaced 2,000 cubits away from the sanctuary. Okay, then so now he's telling them as he's carrying the ark, the Levites are carrying, still keep your distance away from the ark. Keep yourself away 2,000 feet. So I looked that up and in the camp, they camped themselves not right up on top of the the, uh, the, um, the sanctuary, which is made of three chambers. He said, move further back, which is a point fifty seventh of a mile. So they could not be right up on top of where the camp was because God would come down and his presence would come down and the people couldn't come up upon him. Okay? Thank you, Jesus. And it, it talks about every time when uh, they camped, the, the all the tribes had to move within two thousand cubic feet away from the from the uh, the sanctuary or the wilderness uh, 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 sanctuary. Okay, so that's why we have here. And they commanded the people and saying, "When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the priests bearing it, then you shall remove from your place." Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits a measure, okay? And um, and then it says here, because you have not passed this way before. And it truly talks about Christ when he, when he was um, on the earth and him becoming the sanctuary. When he rose from the dead, he told, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended, okay? Even though the veil of the temple was rent, and the way into the holiest of holy was available, but now he couldn't be touched by them because he needed to ascend into heaven to the mercy seat of God and offer himself, okay? And then he came down and he told them, you can touch me, touch my hand, touch me this, because the way into the holiest of holies was withheld from us and only we could worship God afar off, even these people who he had called. Okay, they had called, only the Levites could handle it. And the Levites we saw here could not actually look upon when the place where Aaron went. He covered it with skin. When they went to get to gather up the um the wilderness uh a showbread and lamp, they covered it with skin. So it means that God, the way into God, or the way into uh, uh viewing uh God was closed off until the time of Christ, okay. So the um I wanted to sing the song that talk about um when you see it go after it remove from your place and go after it okay the song I want to sing y'all is <laughs> I want to sing this song y'all because this came to me as I was 
uh, thinking about it. Um, and it says, step to Jesus, the battle he will help you fight. Step to Jesus, he'll be your guide in life. Step to Jesus, step to Jesus, he'll make everything all right. Hallelujah. Step to Jesus, the battle he will help you fight. Step to Jesus, he'll be your guide in life. And this is because now they're getting ready, y'all, to cross over the Jordan. And when they talk about when he, when they, the uh, Levites are carrying the ark, which you know from Exodus, the 25th chapter. This is symbol, a crown of gold round about it. And it is referring to the humility of Christ. But that is where the presence of God is in the ark of the covenant. And that's summed up in Christ, okay? And you shall have a space between you and it, uh, about 2,000, which I told you, it referred to them camping and putting a space between uh, them as the camp was set up in the wilderness of 2,000 cubits, uh, of 2,000 cubits, uh, whatever that is, cubit, which means a 0. 0.57 of a mile, okay? But the key thing today is that um, that we're saying, the song says, when you see it, remove from your place and go after it. Christ is still the one that we're going after. And now we can we don't have to say, well, um, we're going to keep a space. Because when Christ died and rose again and came back, then we have access because the veil of the temple was rent. And this is what you see. They're getting ready to go into battle. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And Joshua spake. Uh, uh, unto the priest saying, take up the ark of the covenant and pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, this day I will begin to magnify thee in the sight of all the people that they may know that as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come into the brink of the waters of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the word of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby ye shall know that the living God is among us, and that he will with, without fail drive out. From before you, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the, the Hivites, the Parasites, the Geshites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites, seven nations. Behold, the ark of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. So when he said the ark of the Lord is passing over and the Levites are carrying it, it is really talking about the word of God, the ark of safety, our refuge and our hiding place, which is the ark is symbolizing of us now being in Christ. Christ is our ark. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now, therefore, take you 12 men out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe, a man. Okay, when you see on the priest, you see the 12 stones represent every trial. So you see the, the number three, you see the number 12. And it shall come to pass as soon as the sole of the feet of the priest had that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan. So it's saying the Lord is resting. So that means they're carrying in this ark, which is made of shittenum wood, a case of wood, and with overlaid with gold inside and out, it's saying it is carrying him. So God is showing us what he is going to do, okay? And which is symbolizing Christ and the presence of God, which the presence of God now for us is in Christ. That's how we can come boldly in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and we gain access to God because Jesus is the door. To the sheepfold. No man can come unto God except by Jesus Christ. He is that ark. Uh, it says, 
Uh, and it shall come to pass as soon as the sole of the feet of the priest that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the waters that come down from above and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass that the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan and the priest bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as they that bear the ark were come into the Jordan, the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped into the brim of the waters for Jordan overflowed all his banks all the time of the harvest. Thank you, Jesus. So they're talking about the season, season time because we know Jesus, the seven feasts of God relates to harvest time and harvest season. So now this is the time that the, uh, of the harvest, okay, which is like the springtime. Uh, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam that is beside Zarathan, and those that came down toward the seas of the plain, even the salt sea, failed and were cut off, and the people passed right over against Jordan. The priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry, dry ground, just like he did with Moses, and the breath of God blew. But now the waters are obeying God and the ground is obeying God and God is controlling the elements. Thank you, Jesus. And the waters are standing still and the ground that the water just left is not muddy. It is dry. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All the Israelites passed over on dry, dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. Thank you, Jesus. So now they're standing upon it says, and it came to pass when all the people were clean past over Jordan, we're in chapter four, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, and this here passing over Jordan is the same as coming through the Red Sea. It is a type of burial. It's talking about what happened on the other side of Jordan is no longer. Thank you. You don't have to remember what happened on the, on the other side. They are now crossing over and it's come. Hallelujah. God is taking them through in a spiritual walk. It's not just physical because you know it ain't physical. The water is now standing up and the ground is dry. So God is doing something in the spiritual realm. And it came to pass when all the people were clean past over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, Take you 12 men out of the people, out of every man, every tribe, a man, and command ye them saying, Take from hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm. Twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. And Joshua uh, called the twelve men whom he had prepared uh, of the children of Israel out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan. Take you up every man of him a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of Israel. So wherever the priest was standing with the ark of God, holding it, thank you, Jesus. You tell about the, 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 the Levites was holding the, the ark and carrying it. It said, go where they stood and get a stone from there. Thank you, Jesus. Get a stone from there. Thank you, Jesus. So now we see, it said, God stood in the waters. Because they was carrying the ark on their shoulders. And he told these men, I want you to go and that stone, you're going to take a stone from that place where those men are holding the ark and take that and bring it to the shore and put it on the side, okay, where you're going to camp. Because that means God is letting you know they on firm ground, not sinking sand. Thank you, Jesus. they on solid ground. And God wants them to remember and Joshua called the 12 men for whom he had prepared the, the children of Israel out of every tribe. And Joshua said unto a pass over before the ark of the Lord into the midst of Jordan and take you every man of you a stone upon his shoulder according to the, it is, when it says according to your, uh, uh, a stone upon your shoulder, it don't mean a little teeny rock like, you know, he's a little teeny, no, no. You got to carry that thing, man, okay? I want you to get a real situation. So God had them in a, the midst of the Jordan and therefore they were taking out stones, every man who, one man from every tribe. So they took 12 stones. 
that this may be a sign among you that when your children ask your, their fathers in time to come, saying, What meaneth ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan. The waters of Jordan was cut off and that these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. And the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took 12 stones out of the midst of the Jordan as the Lord spake unto Jordan according to the number of the tribe of the children of Israel and carried them over with him unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the ark of the, of the covenant. Now Joshua set up 12 stones. And they are there even to this day. And for the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the law commanded Joshua to do. So the priest was standing the whole time holding the ark. Okay. Okay. And God was moving. Thank you, Jesus. Um, uh, everything that was finished that the law commanded Joshua to do. And speaking to the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua. And the people hastened and passed over. And it came to pass when all the people were clean passed over. That the ark of the Lord passed over and the priests and in the presence of the people. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad, half of the tribe of Manasseh passed over. Armed before the children of Israel as Moses spake unto them. Because you remember these Gad... Manasseh and Reuben was going to stay on the other side of Jordan. They weren't going to cross over, but they, they talked to them, says, now you're going to stay on this, on the side of Jordan, but you have to cross over with your people to make sure. That's why they say they cross over, said, we're going to go until our brothers. When we talk about brotherhood, we until our brothers get their inheritance because they decided to keep their cattle on the other side of the Jordan and stay over there. And they, and they told him no, which we, you can look back at that particular incident because he said Reuben, Manasseh, and them says no, and Gad, we're going to go until they get their inheritance. So they are pledged to leave their children and cattle on the other side of the Jordan and go until they deal with their brothers until they get there. Because sometimes people say, well, I got mine. Uh, you got to go and get yours. And God said, that's the wrong attitude. Okay, Reuben, Man, uh, Gad, and Manasseh said no. They passed over too before the children of Israel armed and ready to fight too. About 40,000 prepared for war passed over before the Lord unto battle into the plains of Jericho. On that day, the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all of Israel and they feared him as they feared Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord spake unto Joshua said, command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony that they come up out of Jordan. Because the priest was standing still. Like people tell me, I can't stand up. <laughs> they were standing still holding that ark. Okay. They were, those, those were some serious men. Them Levites said, we are not going to say, I'm tired. And I've been holding this thing so long. No, they knew God was moving and they stood right there. They said, now tell God, Joshua, tell them the time to come up. And Joshua therefore commanded the priest, saying, Come ye up out of the Jordan. And it came to pass that when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord will come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the feet, of the priest's feet was lifted up, up unto the dry land, that the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. And the people came up out of, of the Jordan on the 10th of the first month. Now, what happens on the first month? We know the first month was the Passover. And the 10th day is when the lamb was separated. And then they kept the lamb separated for, for four days. Well, they examine him the first 10 days. And the fourth day of the 14th day, they go crucify him. So this is on the 10th day of the first month. That's why he tell you the first month. That's the same month of the Passover. And, and camp in Gilgal. And the east border of Jericho. And these 12 stones which they took up of Jordan did Joshua pitch. So this is, they come up out of Jordan. That's why you notice relating to Christ um, being crucified with Christ. Because it's the first month and it's the 10th day. 
The first month is talking about the month of the Passover. This the month when he came out of Egypt, he said, This is to be declared a first month. Okay, from this time on, this is the first month, and this happened on the 10th day. This is going back to refer to the Passover that he told Moses, which you could do the references here, okay? Uh, eight. Um, and it says in April here, but it also tied into the time that the Passover was instituted. Exodus 12, 26, which we could go back there right quick. So God set up the month, which means this is a spiritual month, y'all. The spiritual month when God instituted the killing of the lamb and the, on the 10th day, they uh, they separated the lamb on the 10th day and the 14th day to kill the lamb. And that's when they came up out of Egypt. Now they done crossed over. So this is all time to the Passover lamb and the death and burial of Christ. Okay. And he spake unto the children of Israel saying, when your children shall ask their fathers in times to come saying, what meaneth these stones? Then you shall let your children know saying Israel came over this Jordan on dry land and the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan for before you until you were passed over as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea when he dried up uh, from before us until we were gone over. God dried up the waters so his children can get over that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord that is mighty that ye might Fear the Lord your God forever. Okay? So we're going to stop there. But I want to go uh, back because this first month and the 10th day. The first month and the 10th day is going to take us back, which I'm going to give you the scriptures to that. Uh, I'm going back to 12, 26. Exodus 12, 26. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's go back to 12, 26. Okay. And okay, oh, this night, okay, and this is the 12, uh, 12, and I'm again at the 12, and, and you shall pass through the land of Egypt. Um, I want to say it's gonna be the first month, and I was smite, and it refers the references go back to the Passover, and it talks about it should be the first month and how they are to separate the land. And this is coming back to Exodus, the 12th chapter, and it says 26 to 27. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What meaneth by this service? And you shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the house of the children of Israel. And when you smote the Egyptians and delivered his house, and the, the people bowed the head and worshiped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord. So just talk about the time of the Passover. The first month and the tenth day is the same feast time as the Passover. So that's what coming across the Red Sea and coming across the Jordan is all tying him back to Christ. His burial and resurrection. Because that's why I talk about they passed through the waters of, of the Red Sea. Now they pass through the waters. Um, um, when the song says, uh, Jordan River, I'm bound to cross one more river. And they talk about this is this this the river is gonna take them into to possess the land. And they of course they got a few more fights, but they had to cross the Red Sea and they had to cross the Jordan River. Now some people say they crossed the Jordan River because of the issues that they had to go through the waters again. Thank you, Jesus. That's what some theologians. But clearly, the Jordan River is indicated as being the place where the children of Israel have to go through. And God is not only showing the nations who he, who he is, he's also showing his people that he's God. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going to get the, um, the first month and the 10th day, which is important. The people came upon out of the land on the 10th day of the first month and encamped in Gil. And we want to look at Gilgal because that's going to be important too. The east border of Jericho. Okay. That's going to be an important place too. That something's going to happen. Because remember what we started. All script is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instructions in righteousness. That the man or the woman of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's why we learn. That's why you study scripture. And it's important to see how God brought them over the Jordan 
and the water stood in the banks. But as soon as the priest, as long as the priest stood in the middle of the Jordan, that water had to obey. Now, you know, when the water in the river got to obey, thank you, Jesus, and the wind and the storm obey, we need to be obeying too. If the wind and the storm can obey God, what's happening with us? Jesus, help us. <laughs> it says, the waters did not move until God uh, told Joshua to tell them priests to come up out the, out the Jordan. And then the waters overflowed again. Okay? We're talking about God. Now, there's no one, like, Je like Rahab said, there's nobody God but God. Rahab said, he's God. <laughs> and God going to show the world that he's God. But we want to hold fast to that. And this is what's important that um, as we see, um, step to Jesus, as he told them, when you see the ark moving, stay back 2,000 cubits feet. And I must look for the scripture that says that when they did the camp, how, how close was they camped to the sanctuary, the, the wilderness sanctuary. They had to stay 2,000 cubits face away. And we only get access to God to come boldly after the true Lamb of God. All the other things are leading up to God, leading up. So now we have access to the throne of grace. Come boldly. Now, you know, we are blessed because it, all over here, it says clearly, don't come too close. God was clear about that. Do not come too close to the ark that's coming before you because you have not passed this way before. Thank you, Jesus. This is that God is doing something new so that you might observe and see. Here the two. You have not passed this way hitherto. You haven't come this way before. God doing something. And God is doing something in the spiritual realm. And we got to know, too, that God is, Christ is still the one that we, not taking it like an attitude, like, you know, well, we have Jesus. Look back and see when God's presence was made known now in the Old Testament with Joshua and the children of Israel. And how God, look and see. Now, God does not change. He's the same God. And I don't know, but some way along the line, we got the attitude that, you know, we can just, you know, just flip it, God. You know, God knows I'm in sin and he's just going to deal with it. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have mercy. The only reason that we are not cut off now is because Jesus making intercessions for us. <laughs> Jesus, the high priest forever. The scripture said he's a high priest forever. Didn't say until you get to heaven. He said he's a high priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek. That means forever. Thank you, Jesus. He's our high priest forever. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to always be in Christ. We're not going to step out of Christ, even in the presence of God. We're going to be in Christ. When God see us, he's going to see us as the, 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 the tabernacle that Christ, okay, purchased. Thank you, Jesus, because he's our high priest forever. So we can look back here and see that first month and go and tie them right back to um, Exodus 13 and talk about it. It's all Deuteronomy 26 and 5, tying them back to the feast of the Passover feast is when they came up out of the Jordan. The Passover feast. The same exact time that they, the lamb was separated. Thank you. That's why you know the Jordan and the Red Sea is tied to Christ. Thank you, Jesus, because the scriptures is given. And it's this book I have, which y'all can get this book too. I have this book, Christ and All the Scriptures. And this book will help you too. The other books, I'm giving you all the little books I have. This one is not marked up because I had one I marked up when I was in my 20s. But I got a new one, so just to keep it. I don't know why I need to keep it for now because when I go to heaven, I don't need to take off none of this. But I got books. Um, this particular, Christ and All the Scriptures, get it? Okay. Okay, find this scripture too. The A. M. Hodgson. Okay, get this book. And the other one I told y'all to that big one too. If you studying, because I might be going on to heaven. <laughs> I might be going on to heaven, Jesus. I'm telling you. I know people say you shouldn't say that. Paul said, um, uh, to be absent from the bodies, be present with the Lord, of course. But I'm not gonna go anywhere until the Lord see fit for me to go. But believe me, I've been here 73 years, y'all. <laughs> 73 years. So anyway, we're going to stay. I want you to study the scriptures. I want you to stay in the scriptures. And what has kept me through falling and getting back up has been the word of God. I'm telling you, I don't see nothing else on this earth that you need to pick up and study except the word of God. I don't know what else you need to study because look at the, what's going on in the world. And I was telling somebody, it's no way... 
when these forces of darkness come, if you don't have the light and the word inside of you, hide that word in your heart. If you don't have the word in you, how are you going to fight? First of all, Ephesians 6 chapter says it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And how did Jesus deal with the devil? It was written. It was written. It was written. The devil isn't going to listen to your words. You got to say it's written. Thus says the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You got to be able to say that and the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance in the time of trouble what God has spoken unto you. But that's why you got to study. Study. 2 Timothy 3, 16. I'm just telling you. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. <laughs> I done tried to leave before, but God got work for me to do. And it's one thing to tell people, you need to, you need to get into the Word. I'm finding out. I'm going all the way back to the beginning. And I'm not going through every little page, y'all. I'm just going through things that God brings to certain people. And he was talking about Joshua specifically. When we go to deal with the battle, then I may pull up Joshua's battles. Because of what Joshua did when he was down in the valley and Moses was on the mountain. Because he's an example. Not only the children of Israel because we're going through the book of Joshua. But Joshua is one of those ones that, first of all, he was ready to go in. And he said, Never mind what these people say. We can go in and possess the land. He had an attitude that kind of way. So we're going to look at him specifically too. And um, we're going to continue on as the Lord lead us. Okay. And we're going to see the, through the first battle of them taking over Jericho. Okay. And we're going to see the God said, we're going to see, we're going to, feel, we're going to the next chapter, the Lord willing, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm still here. I want y'all to get in the word. I'm telling you, you need to get your book and start studying. I don't care what kind of degrees you're trying to get in this world. Nothing is going to equip you. It says they're going to be thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Be, they uh, may be perfect. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Okay? That's how you're going to get it. It's going to be the scripture. The scripture is given inspiration by God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and righteousness, for instructions and in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect. That's what I see here. I mean, that's what I'm finding out. So please push the like button. And today we're going to see, say, um, when you see the ark moving, go after it. I like when they say go after it. you got to go after Christ. Thank you, Jesus. you got to seek Christ. You go after it. It says remove from your place and go after it. Go after it. When you see the ark moving, when you see Jesus moving, you need to go after him. <laughs> Go after Christ. Whatever. Just, some song says, whatever you're doing in this time. Um, uh, I forgot the name of the song. It means, please re consider me. Whatever. I hope that song come back. There's a song about whatever you're doing in this season, Lord. Please remember me. So we're saying, move, remove from your place and go after Christ. Go after Christ. And that's what we need to do now. We need to go after Christ because God is doing now, I hope that song come back. That's the one song I heard like in the side of my ear. Whatever you're doing in this season, um, please remember me. I can't remember the song, but it, it, there's a song. And we need to be remember. Go after Christ. Go after him. If you don't go after him now, you, you're going to be missing him. Okay? Whatever he's doing, we got to go after him and, and pursue him. It, it's Pastor Capable saying go after it. Well, I hope that it is Christ. Not a car, not a house, not fine clothes, not jewelry, not watches. No, not after money. You need to go after it. Go I mean go after the ark. Go after the, and the ark is Christ now. He is the ark. Okay? And we're going to close out. Uh, and um, the song, I, I tell you the two songs I have, y'all. Y'all know the two songs I've been singing here. Um, Step to Jesus, the battle he will help you fight. Step to Jesus, he'll be your guide and light. Step to Jesus, step to Jesus, he'll make everything all right. Hallelujah. And there's a song, and the other one is, um, One more river to cross. And that's talking about Jordan River. I'm bound to cross. I got one more, one more river to cross. But in them two songs, just a little bit of, you see, I got little tidbits of songs, y'all. <laughs> you can see I'm not in the choir, right? <laughs> They'll be like, what is she doing? But this is in my fellowship and uh, worshiping of God. 
these songs come and I'm just sharing to you, you might actually be on the choir, heavenly choir. <laughs> I really have a real voice to sing. Me, I'm just making a joyful noise. But the thing is, you go after Christ. When you see the ark moving, you need to go after him. When you see Jesus moving, you need to go after him. Whatever Jesus is doing. So you can see, Lord, when you see that, that God is moving, you need to go after the things that God is going after. Okay? And we see here. Please push the like button and encourage somebody else to come along. We're on an intentional course. And I'm telling you, I cannot stress it enough. You need to get in the Bible and let the Bible get inside of you. Because it's, it's through the light and life. The word is light and life. It's not, it's clearly. The word of God is life and light. When darkness begins to come in, who, what you going to fight the enemy with? What I think. And I, I, I fear, or I don't know. You got to have God standing up on the inside. He said, I will walk in you and talk in you. That's what the Lord said. I will walk in you and talk in you. That's what the scripture, I'm going to put that scripture down too. Jesus, the Lord said, I will walk in them and talk in them. That's what God said. That's what you want, God walking and talking in you. <laughs> I will walk in them and talk in them. Okay, that's how we're going to be able to fight. You're going to be able to fight because God himself will, um, uh, be able to speak through you and to you. I will walk and talk in them. Mm, so that's what it's about. Okay. That's what we, that's what we are right now. And it makes us available for him to do that is because we have received Christ. I will dwell in them and walk. In, okay. I'm going to put that down. Second Corinthians six, 16. What agreement? Uh, uh, um, even as God said, I will dwell in them. I will walk in them and he, I will be their God and they shall be my people. I will walk in them and talk in them. That's what we want God to walk in and talk in us. That's what we want God on the inside. Because otherwise, it's your sophistication and education is not going to fight the devil. Because the Bible says he's wiser than Daniel. So we can't beat him with the, our uh, uh, carnal mind. We need Christ. We need the Lord on the inside. Okay? Second Corinthians. And uh, let's see what 18 says. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So the 16 down to the 18. Okay? God will walk in us. You're not by yourself. That's what the words say. We got to know right there. God is in me. <laughs> Come in to me, Lord. Have the way. I am yours. Please push the light, but I can't push stress enough. Please get into your Bible. I know a lot of people saying, well, this. Not just the letter, y'all, okay? Ask God himself to come inside of you, and he will give you understanding. Not the wisdom of the world that come to naught, but the wisdom that comes from God and through the Spirit of God, okay? And Christ is definitely all the way back in the old, in Joshua and Moses building the ark, okay? God, all of it is pointing to Christ. God's showing you that the ark is there, and his presence is there in the ark, and now his presence is in Christ. When we are in Christ, then we can receive the presence of God. We can be in the presence of God through Christ. That's the only way, y'all. It's not going to be about a, a building and all the stuff they make. All, it ain't going to work, okay? Because God already done set it up from Genesis to Revelation. Okay. Please push the like button and continue to follow as the Lord leads you. I thank God for you. Please don't run away. Okay, push the light and let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you. We are excited about our salvation. We are excited about you. We're excited about your word. We pray that the word will fall on good ground, take root in the very depths of our souls and anchor us on the solid rock that we will be established. Hallelujah. Thank and praise you, Lord God, that you would direct our steps, order our steps according to your will, your way, and your word, Lord God. We thank and praise you for the mercies and the grace that you've given to us, the mind, O oh God, of Christ. My God, thank him for a heart that the word will fall on good ground and take root in our life. Help us not to harbor any ill feelings or any uh, blemish or any or in our heart, Lord God, unforgiveness. We, Bakosha, we pray that you continue to cleanse us and to purge us and to prune us that we will bring forth more fruit. And those who do not know you, Lord God, but seeking you and they're, they're wondering, Lord God, that you will open up the eyes of their understanding. They will know the hope of your calling, the riches of your inheritance and the saints when you raise up Christ now quickening our mortal body. You are the sovereign God. You are the almighty. My God, there is none like you, Lord God. Bakosha, Lord. We thank and praise you for your power of the Holy Spirit, your blood whereby we have been redeemed. 
redeemed. My God, we pray your will, your way, and your word will be done in us and through us, God. Remember the church. Remember the homeless. Remember the souls on this earth, God. Even now, God, as you're shaking the very foundations, Lord God, everything that is rooted and grounded is not in you, Lord God. You said through the prophet Jeremiah, you're uprooting and tearing down. God, that you might rebuild again. We thank and praise you for your word going forth into the ears of the hearer, into the hearts of believers, converting souls into your kingdom. For we, hallelujah, give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We rejoice in thee, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you for your mercies and grace toward us. Remember our families and our children, our children and children. Lord, there's so many things, O oh God. But we know that you're in control. You are sovereign and your will be done on this earth. Hallelujah. We thank and praise you for remembering our families, our children, and children for generations to come. We pray that your will be done in the governments and those who sit in positions of authority. None are without you. For your eyes behold the good and the evil, Lord God, to pay every man according to his word. We thank and praise that you have not rewarded us after our deeds, but you've been merciful, long-suffering, and patient toward us. For by God, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor as we commit our bodies, soul, and spirit into you. Oh my God, we give you the glory, ask you to have your way. Let your peace rest, rule, and abide in our hearts, henceforth now and forevermore. It's in Jesus' name we pray and count it done. Amen. Amen. So we've been busy, but we're going to go on and see, and we're going to keep studying, y'all. We're going to keep studying. This is a, intentional, okay? Because it said, hide thy, hide thy word in my heart. Hopefully we can hide the word in our heart, okay? I'm going to try to remember the one that said, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. That song is just, it's, it's, the words is there, but the tune. And I don't even know, so hopefully it'll come back. <laughs> Please push the like, but encourage someone else who is just learning and trying to understand. I'm not as uh, sophisticated as some people, but just a plain, simple person, just a, a witness for Christ, okay? My soul is a witness. I'm truly a witness that God is good and God is merciful and long-suffering and patient. And I just thank it myself. So that's what I'm on here for. Between the little things they have to do here, <laughs> I'm over here just trying my best, y'all. Trying my best. I love you. God loves you. And if we stay in the book, okay, I done showed you a couple books. And as the Lord gave, I showed you other books. And I showed you the ones that deal with this here, these um, these books. These books I've had, I know these books probably here, I've had them when I was in my 20s. And I'm in my 70s now. And I've shared them with the Bible school, different people who I've had a chance to sit down and share the good news with the books that I have had and um and one of my um one of my um uh Christian daughters wrote a book so I'm gonna try to uh bring her book. She she's a uh young lady who I met when I first came to Freedom and she had a heart for young people in the college ministry and just children and she wrote a, a book of affirmations. So I'm gonna kinda I told her I would um uh put her I don't have it now but I'm gonna make sure I bring it up and, and bring it here to to um uh, uh to let her let her know and let you know there are other people out here who are doing their best to give God the glory who are give, doing their best to encourage souls everything is not bleak and dark thank you Jesus there is some light in the world <laughs> there is some light there is somebody who's in this world in this current time who really is not just focusing on the negative okay they got their eyes on Jesus and so I'm going to um try to bring her book up uh, probably the next time we get ready to go into Joel, I just want to let um, you know her name is Tamika Greenlee. And so um, she has a book she put out and a couple of other daughters I have who have published books. And the reason I am, am drawn to them, because when the time I came, almost uh, 18 years in this area, this young lady was always concerned about souls. She was seriously, I mean, Taking time up with them, and that's what you know. Somebody said they're taking time with them, uh, uh, picking up children, and um, uh, we got Elder um, Tanya. We got different ones. Their lives is young people, not old like me. Oh, I mean, young people who are serious about Jesus. Now that really gives you uh, encouragement. You got young people. There's a whole list of them that I met over here in Freedom. You know, people talk about. You know, they always look at the negative things in churches, but you can look around and see the little. Um, jewels that God have in the midst, you know, and it just, you just, I just give them all a hug, really. Because <laughs> I was in my 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and 60s, and I'm in my 70s now. So, you know, uh, Keisha, she's up there with her husband, 
and um, just different ones that I have met because their love for God is real. You know, if you look around, there's some people that you can connect with who really do love God. They're not perfect, but they're striving for perfect, perfection. They're striving. <laughs> they're striving. They said that they might be thoroughly furnished into all good work, that they might be perfect. They're in the Word. There's people, yeah, there's a lot of people. And on this YouTube channel, I got a couple of ones that, that text me. One on my, um, I call him my new sons in, in Christ. He's writing songs, always giving songs. And I pray that they become published. He's writing songs all the time. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to mention him too, okay, and his songs. He's on the YouTube, and I met him through YouTube. I met one particular man. I was on the ship, and I got his name. He's on, the, he's on YouTube. So I mean, you meet people who really do love God, and they are continuously uh, sharing the gospel of Christ. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take time out the next time and at least pull all the uh, – I can't pull them all up, y'all, because there would be a lot of people. But just not to take up too much time. I'm over here rambling now. But um, one other particular son, he's writing songs all the time, and um, – and so I have to do it while my mind is still uh, <laughs> still fresh, Lord. Still, my mind is still fresh. But uh, I just want to thank God for you. I'm gonna let you go now. I'm not gonna keep going, but I'm gonna bring these other uh, names up. So they're on YouTube. They have channels that you. These people that I've seen and observed their lives, they are doing the best they can to give God the glory. Okay, they're not perfect. A lot of times people say, well, if you stumble and you got a little scar, a little mark of that, like, eh, I thought they was a Christian. <laughs> they are a Christian, okay? And that's why God has uh, uh, given them grace, okay? Because it doesn't mean that they have, they have reached a level of perfection, but they're striving. That's what they, we got to be at least striving. Not trying to take advantage of grace and, and say, I'm just going to do what I want to do. And no, they're trying to be. They're trying, and that's what it's all about. And I'm been saved since 24 and gonna be a 74. That's a long time, y'all. And believe me, every single step was not perfect. I stumbled a couple of times. <laughs> Let me show you how good God is. That's why I love Him. He does not throw you away if you stumble. But you don't go will and stumble. Because I think a lot of times people stumble. That's why I make an effort to talk to people. Because a lot of times when you first saved, people do not talk to you. They act like, you know, you saved now and then, I don't know what it is in, in the midst. Sometimes they just, uh, people who are going through, they just, uh, they don't want to. But listen, if I was Rahab the harlot, if I was the one full of the demons, well, however, what, they still, they mad. Rahab is in the in Hebrews. I told you she's in the book of Hebrews, okay? The God is looking for people who were faith. He know we all have sin, y'all. All have sin. <laughs> all have sin and come short of the glory of God. So it's not about... I'm better than them. Because it said, I've, uh, Ray, read, read the 11th chapter. Rahab is in there. And read some of the other people that's in there. Okay? You will see. They weren't perfect. But what they were, they believed God. They believed the, they believed the report. That's what God is looking for. Because he's going to make us all new again. He's going to change us all. He's going to make us all new. <laughs> he's going to take these pieces of clay and make them a new creature. That's what we, I'm excited about becoming a new creature. I probably will have some hair. I don't know if we're going to have hair in the thing. What do you think, y'all? It just said, the Bible said, does not yet appear what we shall be. It didn't say what we're going to look like. It said what we're going to be, but we're going to be like Christ because we're going to see him as he is. So I'm looking forward to that myself because on this side here, you ain't got no whole lot of beauty contests. <laughs> I'm just excited about being saved. And I hope you're excited about it too. Stay in the word. Get into the scriptures. I'm going to give you the scriptures in Joshua and whatever I can give here and continue. Okay. And that uh, Mount Olive Sabbath day journey, talk about and they went a Sabbath day journey, is referring to the distance. The distance, which means when Jesus told them go, he after 40 days, he told them to go and tarry in Jerusalem. And they went a Sabbath day distance because the time was coming they, they were afar off, so God was sending them back to Jerusalem and wait for the promise that is to come. Okay? So they, 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 when that promise came of the Holy Spirit, now they were not going to be afar off. God was bringing them to him because the Spirit came upon them. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we got there. That little distance was cut, cut was ended when they came in, in Jerusalem, which is a Sabbath day journey, which is 2,000 cubits 
uh, miles, uh, 0.57 miles. They went and waited. And they got there, the Holy Ghost came. And that, that distance between us and God, the atonement came at one. Okay? And you know you're at one when the Holy Ghost come upon you because the Holy Ghost don't dwell in unclean vessels. That means the blood of Christ is now applied. Hallelujah. Can't we just do a dance? Put, put I'm grounding again. Please push the like button and encourage someone else to come along. Let's close out. Father, we thank and praise you for what our ears have heard and our heart has felt. We pray that you remember your children on this YouTube channel. Encourage their heart and wherever they are, protect them from danger seen as well as unseen. Make provisions for them according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus as we commit ourselves into your hands and count it done. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.